In this lesson, we're using formulas that you learned in middle school and taking them kind of to the next level. Um, of course, you should remember that the formula for the area of a rectangle is base times height. You should remember that the a square can be found the same way, but since the length of each side is the same, you could just take the side and square it. In a triangle, again, I hope that you remember one half base times height. Parallelogram is also base times height. And trapezoid is one half height times base one plus base two. So these are all formulas that you should have seen in middle school. So in problem four, you're finding the area of a rectangular flag. But I would hope that you'd notice a problem with the problem. This width is given to you in feet and this height is given to you in yards. So you could convert the yards into feet, or you could convert the feet into yards, but since the question is asking you how many square yards of material you need, let's go ahead and convert the 15 feet into yards. 15 feet equals 5 yards, because as you know, 3 feet equal a yard. So from here, area equals 5 times 2, which is 10 square yards. I do, however, want to call your attention to something that you might not have been aware of. Suppose we had converted the yards into feet. Okay, 2 yards equals 6 feet. And then we would have done that the area equals... 6 times 15, which is 90 square feet. Now, these two things are representing the same amount, but what some of you may have thought is that 3 square feet is equivalent to 1 square yard, and so you're, you might be wondering why I'd have to multiply this area by 10, I'm sorry, by 9, in order to get this. And what you need to kind of realize is if I have a square yard, well, that's 3 square, that's 3 feet on this side and 3 feet on this side, and that's why 3 times 3 equals 9 square feet is equivalent to 1 square yard. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out at you. Even though this problem is pretty simple, that concept might have been something that you weren't aware of. In this problem, we have a composite figure. We have what I'd hope you'd realize is a rectangle with a triangle. Area of the rectangle is 5 times 12, which is 60. And then the area of the triangle, well, we know that that's 1 half base times height. And hopefully, you kind of see that the base is 5. And if you look at it and think for a moment, this height that we need in order to find the area of the triangle, well, I know that this is 16. I know that this is 12, so it should make sense that the height 
of the triangle is therefore 4. So that would be 1 half times 5 times 4, giving us 10. And then we add them together, and our final answer is 70 square centimeters. And I'd like you to pause at this point to click the answer that you think is correct for the area of the figure shown below. Yesterday's notes that you dealt with on your own was area of a parallelogram and area of a triangle. We're using those concepts to talk about today's figures, which are trapezoids, rhombi, and kites. First, let's take a look at a trapezoid. And if I have a couple of trapezoids and I orient them such, what are we looking at now? We're looking at a parallelogram. We know how to find the area of a parallelogram. It's base times height. In a trapezoid, however, we have two bases, and their lengths are not the same. So we call this base 1, and we call this base 2. So the area of this parallelogram, what's the base of it? What's the base of this big parallelogram. Well, remember what I did. I took this trapezoid, I duplicated it, flipped it on its head. So if this is base two, what's this guy over here? That's base one. Remember, I took the figure, turned it around, and I ended up forming two parallelograms. So the base of that parallelogram now is what? the base of that whole parallelogram. Right, base one plus base two. And I know some of you are familiar with the formula, but I want you to understand why formulas are what they are. Okay, so the area of this parallelogram is base one plus base two times the height of the trapezoid, which I would hope you'd notice is also the height of our parallelogram. So that's the area of this parallelogram, but remember the area of the trapezoid is what fraction of this parallelogram? Half of it. So there's that one half height times base one plus base two that I'm sure you've seen before, and it is on the reference sheet. But again, in this class, I try to push you to see why things are and not just, here's a formula, take my, take my word for it. So in problem one, we're just finding the area of the trapezoid using this formula. Do I have all of the pieces of information that I need to just plug into this formula and run with it? Yes or no? No, I don't. What am I missing? I'm missing the height. Any thoughts on how we're going to find that height? Because certainly they're not going to give you a problem that's impossible. Right, where we can, we can either use trigonometry or what I'd really like you to realize is that there's something special about that angle that they're giving you. 45, 45, 90, gentlemen and ladies. So what is this segment down here? What is the length of that blue segment I've just highlighted for you? Say that again. You can find the length of that segment. Look at the diagram, really. It's six. Before I go any further, are we not seeing the six? <coughs> okay, so if this is a 45, 45, 90, and this leg is six, the height of that 45, 45, 90, what is it in the 45, 45, 90? In other words, the height of the trapezoid is what, a leg or a hypotenuse of the 45, 45, 90? 
It's a leg. Well, gosh, that's really convenient because in a 45, 45, 90, what do I know is true about the legs? They're the same thing. Remember, a 45, 45, 90 is an isosceles right triangle. Okay, so my height, that was easy. My height is also six. Okay, so now it's just a matter of plug and chug. One half times six times base one plus base two will give us our area. So that's 66. Square millimeters, did someone run the numbers? In? Thank you. We have from the screen what we need. Yes, ma'am. No, no. Remember, 2 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 2. So how about a kite? In a kite, notice the way that I've drawn this kite out for us. I've drawn it so that what I'm looking at is two separate triangles. And that's kind of what I want you to realize is that a lot of these formulas uh, come into being by taking a figure and breaking it up into smaller pieces for which we already have a formula for and then kind of putting the pieces together. We've taken this kite, we've taken this kite and broken it up into two triangles. I'm going to find the area of this red triangle, and I'm going to find the area of this blue triangle, and as you can guess, we're going to take these areas and add them together. So, notice that I've labeled the base of this triangle as D1. Do we see that the base of the red triangle is the same as the base of the blue triangle? Okay. So area of red triangle is one half times base of that red triangle is diagonal one. And the height of that triangle I've labeled as H1. Nothing too complicated. I'm just taking the formula for the area of a triangle, taking these like variables that I've used to identify base and height of the triangles, and you'll notice something when we put it all together. Area of the blue triangle, kind of the same idea. Its area is one half times, remember the same base, that's diagonal one, times H2 is the height of the blue triangle. And as I said previously, we're going to take these two triangles and add them together and see if we can't come up with a nice, concise little formula that works for all kites. So when I take these two areas and add them together, I have that the area of my kite, this isn't my formal formula yet, the area of the kite is this one half D1 H1 plus one half D1 H2. Let's bring some algebra into this mix. Looking at this algebraic expression, if I wanted to factor this expression, if I wanted to simplify this expression, I would look at those two terms and I would notice that they have a couple of things in common. What do they have in common? The D1 and one half. So I can factor that one half d1 out as my greatest common factor. And you've seen this before. You did this last year in algebra. So I'm rewriting this as one half, oops, one half d1 times h1 plus h2, which is what I have left out of those terms when I pull the one half d1 out. Look at the diagram again kind of gave it away that D1 stands for diagonal 1. If I take H1 and H2 and add them together, what is that? Diagonal 2. So our formula for the area of a kite is 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. So if you know the diagonals of a kite, 
You multiply them together and take half, there's its area. What do kites and rhombi have in common? What do kites and rhombi have in common? What property do they both have? Diagonals that are what? <laughs> They're perpendicular. So that same formula for, that we just found for a kite can be used in a rhombus. One half, diagonal one, diagonal two. This formula is not on the reference sheet. Okay, so parallelogram, triangle, trapezoid, that's all there. Half diagonal one, diagonal two is not on your reference sheet, but that's where the value of showing you why the formula is what it is comes into play. Perhaps by virtue of seeing that formula, even if you forget the formula, at the very least, perhaps you'll remember how we came up with it and you'd be able to do that on your own. Okay? So we have from this screen what we need. So let's find the area of a kite. What are the lengths of my diagonals here? 10 and 8. Final answer is 40 square inches. Problem three. This time, notice it's not giving you the length of both diagonals. It's asking you, or it's giving you side lengths and one diagonal. So drawing the diagram might be helpful here. I know that the side lengths are 10, and it's telling me that the longer diameter is, or what well, longer diagonal, excuse me is 16. I know I need to find the length of the other diagonal in order to find the area of this. Any thoughts on how we're going to do that? Think about that property of a rhombus that we mentioned earlier. What do you know about the diagonals of a rhombus? They're perpendicular. So if I draw this diagonal in, what kind of triangles do I have? right triangles, and I know that this is 10, and this segment here that I'm highlighting in blue, what is its length? No, this is 10. This blue segment, I heard it, very good, it's 8. How would I find this segment here? Pythagorean theorem, yes. So x squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. And it works out nice and pretty. x ends up being 6. So what's the length of the diagonal? 12, which means I now have everything I need in order to find its area. I have 1 half times 16 times 12, and that's 96 square centimeters. Okay. If you're able to see annotations on your screen, please pause at this time so you can work out the your turns.